bushwhackers. Keep down. Where do you get something to shoot at? They dropped real good. Come on. Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp, starring Hugh O'Brien. Despite all that Marshal Earp and his deputies could do, the lawless element continued to terrorize Arizona until finally the scandalous conditions were reported to Washington. President Chester Arthur forced the resignation of Governor Fremont and issued stern orders to acting Governor Gosper. He and Chief U.S. Marshal Crawley Dick asked Wyatt Earp to come to Tucson for what amounted to a conference of war. And outlaws have squatted on every waterhole from old Mexico to the Magallans, from the Huachucas to Los Animas. They own sheriffs and most of the judges. It's disgraceful. I agree, Governor. Charleston, Bisbee, Lewis Springs, Prescott, even Tucson, all outlaw boss towns, every one of them. Governor Gosper, as United States Marshals, Mr. Earp and I have no jurisdiction unless federal crimes are committed. <laughs> Don't tell me what you can't do. Here, sit down, both of you. Here are my orders from Washington instructing me to break up these outlaw gangs. And I'm going to do it by issuing shoot-to-kill warrants. Well, I'm against that, sir. In my opinion, it's not legal. Civilized communities cannot exist without law. And I mean enforced law. Although you've done good work in Tombstone, Mr. Earp, no man's life or property is free from attack under our present conditions. I intend to make them safe. Well, I hope you succeed, sir. With your cooperation, I will. You know Dick Gerd, owner of the Lucky Cuss Mine in Tombstone? A friend of mine. He's a hard fighter. I've asked him to organize a vigilante group. I'm doing the same thing in other towns. These will be posses comitatus with the authority of federal law. All they require is experienced officers to lead them. Well, they'll need more than that, sir. You give vigilantes their head and they don't know when to stop. It's up to you to control them. Now, I figured you'd need help in this emergency. Have Mr. Earp's new deputy... Step in. Howdy, big brother. Morgan. <laughs> hey, how come I didn't know that you'd sign on as my deputy, huh? Figuring you'd say no, I didn't give him a chance to tell you. When Mr. Dake explained the situation to them, your brothers agreed you needed help. Virgil's ready to sign on, too, if you say so. Well, now, it isn't uh, quite as bad as all that. But if the governor does insist on this vigilante order, we're going to have a small war in our hands. War's already been declared, Wyatt. Why not give the governor's plan a chance to work? I haven't much choice. I told you you'd come around. You're wrong, Mr. Dake. I still say that vigilantes with shoot-to-kill orders aren't the answer to outlaws in Arizona territory. Well, your way isn't the answer. We must use vigilantes. I see no reason for further discussion, Marshal. Well, sir, someday you might. Good day, gentlemen. Had a fresh talk to the governor, wasn't it? When a man's wrong, I tell him. Shame to obey orders. Mount up, it's a long ride to Tombstone. With your drink, Doc? Well, it's not enough to kill you for. I've been watching those Clanton hands. He looks like a walking arsenal. They've been drifting in here since noon. Mm -hmm. You still a friend of White's? Well, I sure am. Good. Now, they won't talk while I'm around here. 
and I'd like you to find out why Clanton cowboys are liquoring up on a Wednesday afternoon during roundup time. What's on your mind? Wyatt's riding in from Tucson today. Oh, I don't think they... You don't think? Just start listening. I'll be over in Dick Gird's office. Shotgun. Hi, Mr. Gurn. Uh, just now I got your message. Well, since you're the law with Wyatt out of town, I figured you'd better read this letter. The acting governor wants me to organize a vigilante group. He says he's going to order Wyatt to cooperate. He ain't going to order Wyatt to do nothing. But you know, this here makes sense. Call them outlaws. Shoot to kill. Ain't a bad idea. Should have done it a long time ago. Why, it's the only way to do it. White throws him in jail and Sheriff Bean lets him escape. We do make the case where the, the jury's packed with hoodlums. Hi, right, Doc. Hey, Doc. Read this here letter. This new governor says we ought to start shooting to kill. I was with Mr. Gerd when he opened that letter. Probably the most intelligent verbiage ever written by a politician in our time. Jasper gets my vote. Mine too. And when I'm through passing the word, we'll have the fightin'est vigilante posse in the territory. Doc. Doc, you guessed right. As soon as you left, those fellas hightailed it out of town. Clanton issued orders to ambush Wyatt on the trail. Bushwhackers, how many? It's hard to tell. There must have been a half a dozen at the saloon. They'll most likely join up with the Clantons outside of town. If old man Clanton's given the orders, you can be sure of it. Well, let's get started. Give me 10 minutes to round up a posse. They'll be our first vigilantes. This way, Morgan. We taking a shortcut? I don't ride open trail in Clanton country. With enough vigilantes, we could kill all the Clantons. Make every trail in the territory safe. I never have approved of vigilantes. The governor does. Well, I think he's wrong. This is war, Wyatt. You've got Tombstone pretty well in hand. But the Clantons and the 10% ring still run the rest of Arizona. I say shoot them out of the saddles. You won't shoot to kill anybody as long as you're my deputy. And you remember that. Real good. Come on. Are those the rushers we're after? They sure are. But I only see two men. All the better for us. Closer. Not yet. Let him hunt for us. All right, boys. Move in. All right, now take your time, Morg. We're getting set to rush us. I'm not waiting any longer. Come on, get your head. Go. One of them's wearing a star. 
What's the difference? You're getting paid, ain't you? Hold your fire. I want no part of shooting the law. Take the spurs in! Yeah. Hold your fire! Hold your fire! Vic Stiles, he's just a kid. Not anymore, Wyatt. And he had it coming. The same goes for the rest of Clanton's outlaws. You didn't have to kill him. They were trying to kill us, Wyatt. It still doesn't make it right. The governor thinks different. Well, I don't care what the governor thinks. You shot to kill, what did they get us? Clanton, McLowry, Brocious, Ringo? No. No, they're too smart for us. All we get is a bunch of small fry. All right. You had your way. Now, you can have the honor of bringing the bodies back to town. Wyatt, nobody agrees with you. Isn't the first time. You want to add the vigilantes to your list of enemies? They all took a chance of getting themselves killed out there this afternoon. Don't you think you at least owe them a word of thanks? I'll thank them. But not for taking the law into their own hands and killing every man out there. The governor asked Dick Good to organize the vigilantes. He was right. Look, if Gosper wants to stop outlaws, let him issue legal warrants against Brocious Ringo, old man Clanton, and the rest of his hired guns. I'll bring them in, dead or alive, instead of this wholesale killing. I want to talk to Mr. Earp. Alone. Won't you sit down, Miss Craddock? What can I do for you? Can you bring Vic Stiles back to life? Vic Stiles? What kind of a marshal are you? What side of a law are you on? I'd like to talk to you about Vic Stiles. What's there to talk about? He's dead. You're the law. You killed him. You shot down an innocent boy. What's an innocent boy doing working for Mr. Clanton? <laughs> he never worked for Clant. He thought he was going out after wrestlers this afternoon. They promised him part of the reward. He wanted that money for us. We were going to use it to get married. Go to California. But you, you and the vigilantes, you changed all that. I didn't know about you and Vic. I'm sorry. Sorry? You sorry, Vic? He's sorry he killed you. Oh, Vic! Vic! Miss <laughs> Helen. I hate you. I hate all of you. You're murderers. Miss Helen. Murderers! Miss Helen! Miss Helen! Hey, Marshal, it's a big hurry. I'm sorry.
know you're all right. Just sit down let me take a look at it. Boy, you're lucky. Just grazed you. I'm all right. Who was it? Some gal took a shot at me. What happened, White? Close that door. Some girl took a shot at him. Girl? Could have been the same one. What are you talking about? Well, some girl just took a shot at Doc Holliday. I was in my room when it happened. By the time I had enough clothes on, she was gone. Doc all right? Yeah, she missed him. Doc said she didn't say a word. Just stared at him and fired. Stay here, both of you. Patch him up. Holiday and Gibbs. She shot at them. Oh, Vic. Vic. Vic who? Vic Stiles. The vigilantes didn't know him either, remember? Oh, yes. That young outlaw. Well, according to her, he wasn't an outlaw. We couldn't have known about that. What was he doing with those bushwhackers? It's a little late to ask that now. He's dead. Give me a hand, we'll take her over to Dr. Goodfellows. Almost asleep. We gave her laudanum. She could stay over at the hotel. No, she may still be in shock in the morning. She's better off here. I would sure like to be facing Gosper when he hears what happened. Shoot to kill. It's an awful thing. Yeah, it sure is. I don't like posses any more than you do, but you wouldn't be alive if one hadn't gone out this afternoon. I know that. Good night, Doc. Quiet. She is guilty of assault with a deadly weapon. What'll happen to her? It'll be up to Judge Spicer. He'll be rough with her, I suppose. Shooting at police officers and all that. It wasn't Ellie. But maybe if you testify as to her state of mind. You said yourself when I brought her in here she was unbalanced. In my opinion, she was. But that won't be enough. She'll get ten years in prison, at least. My bet is 10 years and no parole. Well, maybe you're right. We can't deny she did it any more than we can deny the vigilantes killed young Stiles. It's not fair, Wyatt. The vigilantes didn't realize. Well, that's just what he's getting at. We shouldn't shoot to kill unless we got proof. A bushwhack in the United States Marshal is against the law. That was proof enough. Was it, Doc? Was it? Well, maybe if your vigilantes hadn't been so eager, that boy could have explained why and how he just happened to be there. Then a court of law could decide whether or not he should die for his mistake. Let up, Wyatt. Everybody feels bad enough without you harping on it. Oh, I want him to feel bad. I want him to feel real bad. I want him to feel so bad that the next time there's any shooting done by vigilantes, they'll do it my way. Because if they don't do it exactly my way, the vigilantes are going to wind up in court charged with murder. It's time to go. Let's get out of here. In my opinion, Your Honor, the young lady was hysterical with grief. I don't think she could distinguish right from wrong. And therefore, she was unaccountable for her actions. Are you suggesting temporary derangement, Doctor? I would call it that, yes. 
It seems to the court that Miss Craddock wanted vengeance and behaved with logical and deliberate malice. She tried to kill Dr. Holliday and Chief Deputy Gibbs before she threatened Mr. Gurdon. And the court might accept one outburst of hysterical desperation, but three? Anything else, Doctor? No, sir. I've given you my professional opinion. Temporary insanity. That girl was in shock. Very well. Thank you. Step down. Marshal Earp, do you have any further evidence to present? If the court please. I have here Governor Gosper's official order to Mr. Gerd. I think the court should read it. Very well. I call Your Honor's attention specifically to the shoot-to-kill order. Illegal. I agree with the court. But the posse who rode out to help my brother and me were acting on that order. On my opinion, a great deal of unnecessary killing was done because of it. The slain hoodlums were bushwhackers, Marshal. Vic Stiles was not a bushwhacker. How's that? Mr. Stiles worked for the Craddock family as a cowhand. He was discharged because of his attentions to Miss Craddock. Being a newcomer from Texas, he hired on with some of the Clanton's cowboys, unaware of the fact that they were outlaws and meant to kill my brother and me. Can you prove that? I saw Mr. Stiles in the fight yesterday afternoon, but he did not shoot at us. As a matter of fact, he tried to stop the shooting, and he was wounded by the outlaws for his efforts on our behalf. When he tried to run away, he was shot down by the vigilantes who were following Gosper's orders to shoot to kill. I see. I asked the court to weigh very carefully what Dr. Goodfellow said about Miss Craddock's state of mind. The man she loved, expected to marry, was killed ruthlessly and without justification. How Vic Stiles was killed is not an issue in this trial, Marshal. I beg your pardon, sir. I believe it is. Because of the governor's order, the vigilantes took law into their own hands. And the respect for the law is the bigger issue here. Therefore, this court should disavow the order to shoot to kill and should rebuke Governor Gosper for it. That is a matter for the federal courts to decide, not this one. Then at least this court can show leniency for Miss Craddock. Marshal Earp, I do not need your instructions on my decision. Yes, sir. This court is recessed for 10 minutes. The court will now come to order. Miss Craddock, you will please rise and come to the bench. Taking the law into your own hands, seeking the death of another person, even to avenge what you felt to be a murder, is a very grave offense. And not excusable because you're a woman. If you had succeeded, three men would be dead. And your tears could not change it. The court has taken into consideration Marshal Earp's testimony relative to your youth and the extreme provocation. Also, Dr. Goodfellows, as to your state of mind. It is the finding of this court that you are guilty of assault with the intent to kill. You are sentenced to six months in prison. <laughs> But in view of the testimony offered in your behalf, I will suspend the sentence. Court is adjourned. Mr. Earp, I don't know what to say, how to thank you. All of us. Well, we can hope that because of you and Vic, the lives of other innocent men will be saved. And, well, that's thanks enough. up the country, the old wild west country, he made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his
Is that a threat? It's a thought. Take it there, so run it through your head. No longer than that, though. Earth caught on the man I'm using tombstone for fence. And I got to make some other arrangements. Mr. Clanton, I warned you to stay out of Tombstone. You'll never get set up there. Earp and these vigilantes are too strong now. They won't stand for it. I can handle my own business. You push along. But you could use Prescott or Tucson or Phoenix to unload. You don't need Tombstone. They'll just gun you down. Shut up. Now you just start thinking, are you my boy? Or do I have to elect me another sheriff? Some fella don't scare so easy. Mr. Clanton, I'm, I'm asking you once again, stay out of Tombstone. No. No. Now I want to hear from you by noon tomorrow. All my clocks keep good time. How about my gun? Doc. What's he here for now, Wyatt? He 
bought the OK Corral. We caught him selling stolen horses. You want to waste time with Jenkins? I'll bring you a message from Sheriff Bean. Bean? Yes. We're holding him for further questions. Lock him up. I ain't got nothing. I want a lawyer. Last shit. Johnny being a scared bug guy says he has to see you right away. Looks like the big thieves are falling out. He had a fight with the clan. Yeah. Any idea what it's about? You won't tell me. He wants to talk to you. Says to me in a big rock above the pass. Why there? He thinks they're watching him. He doesn't want to be seen talking to you. This may be your chance to get rid of him while. Maybe. Meantime, see if you're who. Friends know who really bought the OK Corral and why. They wouldn't believe me. I'm quitting clan. I've got to. Why? Because the old man is pushing and crowding me, and I'm getting in too deep. You should know this is on the level, Herb. Why else would I spill to you? You do seem a mite scared. Sure, I'm scared. Man's moving into the tombstone, and he's out to get rid of you. Won't be anything new. Well, I just want to go on record first. Anything Clanton pulls in tombstone, don't blame me. I'm through with him. For how long? From now on. Or something, Johnny, I don't think you can afford to turn on us. It's not the money, Herb. You never did understand the client thinks he owns me. You aim to quit as sheriff? Just as soon as I can. You know, if you weren't so particular, I could get you.
stop in the fast, we might as well give him a bill of sale for the whole territory. Clanton? Who else? Well, our pups make you in a sale with no wonder. They'd have got them some other way, Mr. Gibbs. I'll ask Wells Fargo to see if they're undercover man in Charleston and can dig up anything. If Ben thinks he's next, he might start remembering what. I'm going to talk to Ben again, but I'll wait till after the dark. Meantime, you, Mr. Gibbs, shake out every saloon in town. Somebody's going to know something. Yeah, I'm gonna 
spell a shot him through the window. Clanton's a fool. I warned him about coming into the tombstone. You know, Herb, if you nail him once and for all, I could cut myself loose from him. You sure you want to, Johnny? I've got to. It's getting more reckless every day, and I can look out from my own eye. All right, if that's the way you really feel about it, this is what you can do. Go on back to the client and tell him you're sorry about what happened. Get him to tell you what the OK Corral set up really means. If I do that, what happens to Clan? And what about his top guns, Brocious, Ringo, and McClowry's? You give me the information I need, and I'll try and catch Clan and the others, too. But like I said before, watch yourself. I 
said I'm back. What else do you want me to do? Nothing. Now. Mr. Clanton, why a derp knows you own the OK Corral? How do you find that out? Holiday grabbed the records in the safe of the birdcage. Well, Doc's neck is getting too big for his collar. What are you going to do about it, Mr. Clanton? I'm not telling you, Johnny. You ride on back to Tombstone. I need you for some miles in for you.
Anybody see you? Nope, but it's real squirrely. I will give my half an hour on the load. And we'll move on the Higgins yard. Old man Clanton and Tom. All right, you seen him. I will scatter around the patrol. We'll all meet at the Higgins yard.
Thank you, honey. Unhappily, gentlemen, the good doctor wins again. Get your bets down, gentlemen. Hold it, Doc. What's the matter? You broke? I want to look at that deal box. You do, huh? Well, you'll have to back up a request like that with a pair of 45s. I'm about to do that. Stay out of this, Morgan. Two against three are better odds, Doc. Legend of Wyatt Earp, starring Hugh O'Brien. Wyatt Earp, needing help, had signed on his younger brother, Morgan Earp, as his deputy. But a month later, it was a standoff whether Morgan was a help or a hindrance. My smart little brother, hanging around saloons with dance hall girls, hanging around gamblers, gunfights, one man dead, two hard hit. All three of them are coming for Doc. I think we have a case for self-defense, Marshal. Never mind that. I'm making a case for that badge. You're Morgan Earp and you're a deputy. Now, what Doc Holliday does, people expect, but they don't expect it from us. I was on my own time. I was off duty. Is the 10% ring ever off duty? Look, we got a war on our hands, and the Citizen Safety Committee is watching how we handle things every second day and night. All right, then. Arrest me. Take my star away. That isn't going to solve anything. Then quit preaching. I'll quit when you quit hanging around saloons. Excuse me for a living. Is that the end of the sermon? No. Your horse has been hitched out there all day. If you're through with it, put it away. Now, that's your fault. I told you and Shotgun Gibbs we we're going to have to watch after Morg. Deacon, you're addicted to milk. Your little brother likes an occasional drink of whiskey. A habit he picked up from you. Morgan also was fond of the ladies, but he didn't pick that up from me. Well, I guess I have to send him back to Prescott. Deacon, hasn't it occurred to you that all men do not care for milk? Aren't you willing to recognize the fact that most of us are susceptible to women? That's not the point, and you know it. You're setting too high a standard for Morgan. The boy is human. I might have known I wouldn't get any help from you. Just because I want to keep my brother out of saloon brawls, I'm accused of being a fanatic. That's right. The next thing you'll want the poor boy to get married. And what's wrong with marriage? After all my tormented years with Mrs. Holliday, the very thought of it is ghastly. Yeah, well, you happen to be a special case. I'll be married a nice girl, be the best thing in the world for him. Look, Doc, he is my kid brother, and I have to look out for him. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, that new girl that works for Mrs. Abbott down at the Emporium. Who? Lucy, uh, Tedder. What's wrong with her, and what's wrong with marriage? She's a... She's a perfect lady, she sings in the choir, and she's pretty, too. Now you're going to play Cupid, is that it? Why not? At least I can point him in her direction, away from those daisies down at the dance hall. It's 
Sometimes I wonder how you hold on to that badge. Haven't you got sense enough to know that's the worst way to get him married? Well, Lothario, how would you do it? Well, if I wanted to betray the innocent lad, which I don't, mind you, I'd tell him to stay away from her. Stay away from her? That's right. What kind of fruit is the sweetest? Well, now, I don't know what kind of fruit is the sweetest. Forbidden. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yes, sir. I see. Horses put away. Anything else to rawhide me about? Yeah. From now on, you stay away from women. All women. And especially Lucy Tedder. Lucy Tedder? Who's Lucy Tedder? Oh, you know who she is. She's the new girl down at the Emporium. I didn't even know they had a new girl at the oh, Emporium. Don't hand me that. I heard that you've been carrying on with her. What's the matter with him? A massive eruption of moral fervor. Well, I've had just about enough moral fervor for one day. Well, now, where do you think you're going? Over to the Emporium. I want to get a look at this girl I'm supposed to be carrying on with. Thank you, friend. Wyatt, if that poor boy ever winds up in front of a preacher, I'll never forgive myself. Well, I'm sorry we don't have the pattern you want, but maybe it'll come in in the next shipment. Oh, can I help you? Yes, ma'am. I like to buy this. Oh, well, uh, it's two dollars. Shall I wrap it? Oh, I'll take it plain. You're Miss Lucy Tedder, aren't you? Well, yes, why? I heard you were. I'm Morgan Earp. Oh, the Marshal's brother? And his deputy. Oh. Well. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. Why again? What? Well, you can exchange that if it doesn't fit. Thank you, Miss Lucy. Hi, Shotgun. Howdy, Morgan. That Shotgun gives his mule Roscoe. I know. He always brays at me every time he sees me. Mind your manners. I'm telling you for the last time, you just keep your opinion on Miss Lucy Tedder to yourself. Hi. What? You told me to keep eye on your brother Morgan. Well? Well, I think he's heading for trouble. Trouble? Yep. I just seen him talking to Miss Lucy Tedder. Why is that trouble? Well, Roscoe don't approve of her. Is that all? Well, now, hold on a minute. Now, Roscoe ain't been wrong about a gal yet. Mr. Gibbs, I'm not going to get in another hoorah with Morgan on the say-so of a mule. <laughs> just don't pay no attention to him, Roscoe. Lucy, honey, I've been buying a new shirt every day for a week. Well, I know that, Morgan. Well, I can't afford it much longer. So let's get married. Married? Mr. and Mrs. Morgan are... Well, what would your brother say? Would he approve? What do I care? He's been big brother to me all my life. Getting married's my own affair. And yours. You love me, don't you? Well, I think so. I know we'll elope. That's what we'll do. Well, Morgan, I have to think about it. How long? Well, two or three days, maybe. Getting married's a very serious thing. Oh. Tomorrow's Sunday. I'll take you for a drive. Morgan, please go. Will you? Yes, yes. Now go. Uh, 
Isn't that nice? A nice Sunday ride. White, I wouldn't dismiss Roscoe's opinion of that girl too lightly. Why? Well, a couple of nights ago, out back at the Emporium, I saw her talking confidential with Tom McLowry. Clanton's McLowry? It's the only one I know. That doesn't prove anything. Well, last night I was talking to an old saddle tramp. When the boy came walking by, taking her home, the saddle tramp said if I was wired up, I'd ride out to old man Clanton's place and ask me some questions about that girl. What questions? That's all I could find out. You found out plenty. Hmm. I found out some more from Mrs. Abbott. Lucy's quit in the end of the week. Smells to me like an elopement. Why can't he keep out of trouble? Are you forgetting who got him into this? Don't worry, Wyatt. I'll ride out to old man Clans the first thing in the morning. No, you won't. I'll ride out there first thing in the morning. He's my brother. Well, don't just stand there. Go on. You'll find it in the southeast corner. You here on law business? No, personal. What kind of personal business? Love. Love? Between my brother Morgan and Lucy Tedder. Well, uh, who's Lucy Tedder? I was hoping you'd tell me. She knows Tom McClary, so she must have some connection with your outfit. If she does, I'd consider it a favor to know about it. Well, why should I do you a favor? Because I don't want personal matters causing trouble. Now, what if she is really mixed up some way with one of your hoodlums? Well, now, you got a cross, sir, using the word hoodlum right here on my own porch. Forget it. Hold your horses now. How soon you want this information? Today. Right off and in a hurry. So I gotta drop everything. Just like you was a friend of mine, which you ain't. Now, don't start acting like a John Law, sonny. If there's anything again, Lucy Tedder, I'll ride in and tell you. Thank you, Mr. Clinton. But not as a favor, you understand? I'm only doing this to save me some trouble, like you say. <laughs> Go get Tom McClory. Uh, howdy, Virgil. Howdy, Morg. Where's Wyatt? He rode out this morning on business. Oh, what'd you send for me? Wyatt got a problem? No, I have. What's her name? Lucy Tedder. We're aiming to get married. I want you to be my best man. Well, no. It calls for a tall beer. Huh. She comes from Missouri. She's a wonderful girl, Virg. Sings in the choir, too. Drink your beer, I'll take down to meet her. Oh, there's time enough for that. Well, when's a happy day? Right away, as soon as possible. We were aiming to elope, but, well, we figured eloping might make it look like we were ashamed or something. Yeah, sometimes eloping's the best idea. I did. Yeah, Pa thought Allie was too skittish. And her Pa thought I was too young, so we just up and eloped. Sure. And you're happy, aren't you? Ah, <laughs> don't start me bragging. Uh, why didn't you ask Wyatt to stand up with you? Wyatt? I don't want him doing nothing with me. He's been big brother me something awful, Virg. Well, that's the way it is, Morg, when there's a big family of boys. Each one has to pick on the one next to him. See, your trouble is there's no herp and tombstone younger than you. I'm tired of getting picked on. Oh. Big brother in you, huh? I'll go see him. Maybe he needs a dose of his own medicine. <laughs> Well, Virgil. 
Virgil. It's the messiest desk I ever saw. What kind of a greeting is that? Hey, what are you doing down here? You always wear your hat like that. What's wrong with my hat? You look like a dude. Why don't you wear it more on the back of your head? Because I don't like to wear it on the back of my head. Come on, get out of that chair, will you? I got some work to do. That's your horse out there? What about it? You shouldn't be riding a plug like that, Wyatt. Why don't you say something? I'd have brought you down a good horse. That happens to be the best horse in this part of the country. Hey, look, what's the idea of coming in here and big brother me like I was 10 years old? If that's where you're going to act, you can get on the stage and go on back to Prescott. Howdy, Wyatt. Well, that's better. I was just giving you a little taste of what you've been dishing out to Morg. Oh, so that's why you're here, huh? He sent for you. Yeah. He wants me to be his best man. He thinks you don't like his girl. I'm not so sure I do. I don't hold with families interfering between young couples. I happen to believe in the politeness and dignity among all members of a family. On both sides. Yeah, but Virgil, he could be making a big mistake. So let him. It's his life. Hello, Mr. Clanton. You know my brother, Virgil? Three Europe's in town? Two wasn't enough. I'm just visiting. Hmm. That little brother of yours sure picked himself a mess of bullets Lucy Tedder spoke for. Spoke for? Engaged to get married to Joe McClowry. First cousin Tom Frank McClowry worked for me. Joe McClowry? He got 20 years for bank robbery. He's in jail in Tucson. There ain't no jail in the West big enough to hold Joe McClowry if he was to hear someone's messing with his girl, especially an herb. How could you ever let a thing like that happen? Why, it's your own brother. Should have stopped it as soon as it started. Well, he better stop it now or they'll be shooting. The McClowry's are a big part of my outfit. And if they tangle with the herbs, you can just count me and Ringo and Brocious on their side. Now, I don't want no fighting over a tomfoolish girl. Well, if it comes to that, don't get in front of my gun. You'll be giving me a lot of pleasure. Well, it won't come to that, Mr. Clanton. See, it don't. Thank you for the information. Don't thank me for nothing. Just tell young Moore to leave that girl strictly alone. The gunslinger's girl. Well, maybe it is my fault. I kind of got him into it. You better get him out. And fast. Howdy, Morg. Howdy, Virgil. You, uh, deliver those subpoenas? First thing this morning. Morgan, I got some bad news for you. Bad news? Better sit down. I'll take it standing up. All right. Lucy Tedder isn't quite, uh, quite the perfect lady she seems to be. Go on. Uh, she's hooked up with one of Clanton's hoodlums. I don't believe it. No? But she's engaged to marry Joe McLaurie, who's in jail in Tucson for bank robbery. That's a lie! Dirty, filthy lie! what I like. Nice, close-knit family. Did they hurt you? I cut my lip. Come on, we gotta bring him back here. For what? Take him to that jail in Tucson. If he won't believe me, maybe he'll believe McGlowry. Oh, what? Telegram for you. He's come over the wall. Well, howdy, Virgil. Out of shotgun. How are things in Prescott? Ah, uh, comparatively quiet. Well, now we're really in trouble. Looks like we won't be going to Tucson. Well, why not? Because McLarry won't be there. They were transferring him yesterday to the territorial prison in Yuma. Killed a guard, and stole a horse, got clean away. Joe McLarry. Well, I never even heard the name before. I knew why it was lying. What did he say? He said you were engaged to marry him. You just wait till I see that brother of yours. He'll get a piece of my mind. Well, you're not going to see him. We're eloping. Tonight. Tonight? I'll be back at 9 o'clock. You leave the door open. Morgan, are you sure? I'm crazy about you. Don't you know that? Morgan. I 
I'll be ready. If any of us serves shoot Joe McClowry, we'll have a full-scale war on our hands. Looks like I'm elected. No, you're not elected. I don't want him shot, I want him arrested. Unharmed. <laughs> Well, now, just, just hold on a minute there. Now, I ain't again taking him for you, wife. But if he gets the drop on me and I cash in, who's going to look out after my dependent? What dependent? Well, Roscoe, of course. Shotgun, if anything should happen to you, I personally will see to it that that mule of yours has his own private pasture the rest of his long-eared life. Well, thank you, Virgil. Let's... That's mighty kind of you. Oh, wait a minute. I'll take my chances with Clanton. I got Morgan into this, so I'll get him out of it. Real easy horse. We'll be over the border by morning, get married in Nogales. Morgan, I hope we're doing the right thing. We're doing just that. Come on. You going somewhere, Lucy? Joe McLowry. None other. But you said you didn't know him. She knows me all right. She's promised to marry me. You. But she's engaged to me. Hey, one of them herbs, ain't you? At least that's what I heard in that jail. Yes, I'm an herb. You know, I think I could have took it. My girl sugaring up to an ordinary man. But when it was told to me that she took up with an herb, why, uh... I kind of saw red. I didn't take up with him, Joe. Why, he just came pushing around here. And you were going to be in jail for 20 years. I'd have been 45 when you got out. I had no choice. You got one now. You, honey, of course. Any money in that till? Yes. Get it. He pushed, did he? Just back up there. I said back up. Listen, McLowry, you kill me and my big brother will ride you down if he's got to go all the way to Mexico City. And which big brother is that, Herb? Wyatt Herb, U.S. Marshal. <laughs> oh, that big brother. Well, now I'm real scared. I got it all, Joe. Say your prayers, Herb. Joe! <laughs> Sweethearts, reunited. That's what I call a fitting punishment. Get him out of here. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be off duty. I just thought I'd hang around a little. What for? Well, I, I thought maybe if you weren't too busy, you could show me how to do that quick draw of yours. You want me to teach? Well, 
You're my big brother, aren't you? Isn't everybody that's got a big brother to big brother him? Uh, who pays for the bullets? Afraid you do. I'm broke buying shirts. up the country, the old wild west country, he made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh.